So in this clip, we're going to uh, discuss asset market equilibrium in an open economy. Uh, and uh, to jump right to jump right in, let's state the goal of this short clip. Uh, we want to derive a relationship between the exchange rate and the level of output that describes uh, asset market equilibrium, financial market equilibrium in an open economy. So the question is, how does that relationship look here? And uh, to take the answer away already, not to keep you all waiting, uh, we're going to derive the AA curve as a downward sloping uh, curve in EY space and uh, all that follows uh, will give us the reasons why this curve looks like that. So let's go to a new page and uh, and get right started. The, uh, the first thing here is that uh, we start with um, a well-known model that gives us a theory to explain exchange rates E and interest rates R together. So a co-determination of exchange rate and interest rates in an open economy. Let me fix this. So here we have on this axis the exchange rate, the level of the current exchange rate. Here we have the domestic interest rate R and here we have real money balances. So we know that uh, in this model, uh, the money supply, so real money supply, is controlled by the by the monetary authorities, by the central bank. So we have this uh, straight line here. As if you twist this left around 90 degrees, uh, you see that uh, real money supply is independent of the interest rate. Um, and then we have uh, real money demand. MP over D as a downward sloping function of the interest rate. So the higher the interest rate, uh, the stronger the demand for bonds, which implies lower demand for money and vice versa. What emerges from that is of course this equilibrium interest rate in the domestic financial market, in domestic money and bond markets. Now this interest rate is independent of the exchange rate but the domestic currency return on foreign financial investments is not independent of the exchange rate since that is equal to R star, the foreign interest rate, plus the expected exchange rate depreciation. So E hat E, let's note that here as well, is the expected level of the exchange rate one period, hence minus the current exchange rate the subscript ET, where we take this expectation as given and unchanging unless we assume that it is changing, what we then want to focus on is what determines the current exchange rate. Okay, let me clean that up here. Uh, we have discussed this elf elsewhere in detail. So what emerges from this is an equilibrium in the foreign exchange market that gives us a uh, equilibrium exchange rate level E star. So we have uh, the domestic financial market equilibrium with the uh, interest rate and the foreign exchange market. And the foreign exchange market and the domestic financial market are in, in equilibrium. That's what we mean with uh, asset market equilibrium. Okay, so the question now is how do we use this diagram and translate it to uh, EY space and then get what we've already called that uh, downward sloping um, downward sloping relationship in there. To do that, uh, I'm going to clear the page and just start here with the, with the 
clean sheet and I will just quickly draw this again we have here E R uh, I'm not going to include all the labels now you know what we're talking about and get this this and then so uh, what do we want well what we want is E and Y where in this diagram that we currently have in front of us does Y appear well obviously money demand here is a function of Y and R so suppose that this is Y1 let's label it here and then we get a shift to Y2 we know that that implies an outward shift of the money demand function so this is M2 Y2 R and not drawn in the best way here but you, you get the point so uh, that implies that the domestic interest rate rises domestic interest rate rises which in turn up here implies that the exchange rate falls so from E1 we're moving to E2 and here we have Y1 and Y2 where of course Y2 is larger than Y1 so here we have our relationship between the exchange rate exchange rate and output how do we get that in the in the diagram so we want to have on this axis here we want to have Y and here we want to have E the E's exchange rate we can just carry over straight from here uh, so we have our E1 and E2 right there now uh, to simplify this we can carry these ones here over we just take a 45 degree line and you know this is maybe not the scale but you get the point so we're using these two and carry it over here and get Y1 and Y2 where Y2 is larger this Y2 is larger and then we have here the decrease from E1 to E2 and that means that we get one point two points we connect these we have our curve and we'll label it AA so there we have the downward sloping relationship that describes asset market equilibrium in an open economy in EY space let's just draw it again slightly clearer and cleaned up so here E Y and A A so asset mark any point along this curve is consistent with equilibrium in both the domestic financial market and the foreign exchange market so that any point along this curve describes asset market equilibrium for the home country given world conditions given the foreign uh, foreign interest rate uh, specifically uh, so that we get a negative relationship in the asset market between domestic output and uh, the exchange rate uh, meaning the higher domestic output and income the lower is the exchange rate what's the causal relationship there well as income increases demand for money increases and the interest rate increases and that leads to an appreciation of the uh, exchange rate today against the foreign interest rate and the expected exchange rate so in a sense uh, causality can be seen to go this way so uh, what else can we say about uh, what's going on here and what uh, the shift factors are um, let's assume for example that uh, let me draw, draw that 
like this. Let's assume that the money supply goes up. What will happen if the money supply goes up? Money supply increase leads to a shift up. So for any given level of output, a higher money supply implies a more depreciated exchange rate. Uh, and similarly, um, in fact, equivalently in this kind of model, a fall in the price level leads to a shift up, implies uh, a fall in the exchange rate in a more depreciated, uh, sorry, a fall in the interest rate and a more depreciated exchange rate for any given level of output. And uh, similarly, we can add to this uh, that uh, the expectation of a more depreciated exchange rate and uh, an increase in world interest rates and foreign interest rates leads to this upward shift and with the reverse arrows a downward shift of the AA curve of particular interest is of course the shift in the money supply since this describes uh, monetary policy and that we will address in the next video